Hello guys, uh, Rebel Hero back again with another review. Um, this one I'm actually going to do an unboxing for, and first impressions, and then a review will all be in the same video. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. By the way, I'm opening it with this uh, Kershaw. Love of, or I don't, say, I don't want to describe it as lovely, but amazing old pocket knife. I would have done a review on it, except I for the life of me cannot remember what it's called. I mean, I know it's Kershaw, but that's about all I remember. So I'll have to figure that out if I want to do a review. Anyway, get this open. It just arrived, like, not even 20 minutes ago. It took about a week to get here after ordering it. I ordered it from uh, coldsteel.com. But, I guess I made a mistake of ordering it two days before the uh, Labor Day weekend. So, that was my fault. Let's see, it came with I just put this receipt. Alright. Actually I had to make my bed to film this video. Let's see the specs on it. Um, the blade is, did it actually say on here? No, but I believe the blade is 20 and a quarter inches. I'm sorry, not the blade. The blade is 15 and a quarter inches, and I think the overall length is 20 and a quarter inches. It is 1055 carbon steel. It's a block, black oxide coating, or I don't know if it's oxide, black baked on coating. It's got a nylon sheath. Has three snaps. I didn't really want that. I honestly wanted just one right about here, and I wanted it to be leather. But you know, it's thirty-two dollars. If you go to Cold Steel website, it'll say forty-two because it's ten dollars shipping and handling. And when you look at the price of an item, it throws in the shipping and handling costs so that you're not like, oh, it's thirty-two dollars. Oh wait, I forgot to pay shipping and handling. It's it's kind of nice. I've never seen it done before, but I do like that. Um. I actually bought this retail. It cost me forty-two dollars, like I said. It's counting shipping and handling. The blade itself is thirty-two. Um, most of the time, I buy a blade. I will not buy it retail. Cause generally, if you go to buy something retail, it's anywhere from ten to fifty dollars more than it is somewhere else. Like you can get on Amazon or True Swords or Bud K. Like I said, generally half the price or pretty close. But uh. This was actually the same price. That's very good looking. This is my first Cold Steel product I've ever owned, and my first Kukri, so this will be interesting. It's got a little hand protector here. I've heard people complain about that. I was reading a lot of reviews on it online because I was trying to decide which cookery I wanted. Like I said, a lot of people are complaining about that. I don't see the issue with it. If anything, it would just keep my hand from sliding up. And um, if you wanted to strike with it, because it is, was designed as both a bushcraft and a fighting cookery. But um, yeah, I like it. It's got a nice. Uh, Pumps almost well, so your hand's not gonna slide off. Um, only thing I wish they would have done since it is designed as a fighting tool is do a little something else with this pommel. I'm a huge fan of skull spikes and window breakers, things like that, especially in a fighting aspect because that hurts. No wrong, I mean, it's full tank, so you hit somebody that's gonna hurt, but if you could just narrow it down, maybe a little bit more of a not a point necessarily, but a little bit smaller spot. And, focus the impact a little more. I feel like that'd be awesome, but it definitely is going to hurt and it's going to hold up the way it is. It's really nice. It's got a lanyard hole. If you can see that. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. 
tiny little, not that I'll ever use it, but. Alright, so let's do an initial sharpness test. Let's try some a little bit thicker paper. That receipt from earlier. Just printer paper. It's not laminated or anything. It's not bad. It when it does bite in and cut, it does like a really fine tear if you look at it. I can't see that. But yeah, it does more of a really fine cut. It does a it's nice smooth cut. Like here, I'll use my Kershaw. See the difference? That's smooth cut versus fine tear is a little rougher. But um, like I said, it was definitely okay. I wouldn't say it's dull, which is, thank God, most time I get a blade, especially one I'd consider, you know, decently cheap. This isn't like, um, extremely cheap, but it wasn't like super expensive, except for just the blade price is $32. Um, it's not real expensive for, as far as blades go. But, uh, actually, all the other cookies I found were actually cheaper by Cold Steel, except for the, this one. Um, and I, I was kind of specific when I was looking for I wanted one with a pretty exaggerated curve here. You know, I've seen ones that were just barely curved, and I didn't want that. I wanted one that, when it curved up here at the top, you can see that yeah, right there. I want it to not just curve, but actually kind of stops, and then starts another angle. I, I just think that looks cool. I wanted it to be at least 17 inches, but I prefer 20. I found ones that were 17 and 18, but then I found some was 20, and it kind of fit what I wanted. Um, the one I really, really wanted was the uh, Gurkha Kukri Machete, and it was just, it was awesome looking. I was, I watched videos on it, and I watched videos on this one too, and it could do a lot, but the other one could do so much more. Um, they were prying with it, and it was, it didn't have a black finish, and I kind of prefer that, but, because it looks more tactical, but it had a silver finish, um, yeah, it, it was sweet, and it came with a Kydex Securex uh, sheath, uh, but it was close to $300, but yeah, I really wanted that one, I might get it, who knows, oh, I almost forgot the sheath, alright, can I talk about it, yeah, it's just, Nylon sheath with kind of a plastic coating on the inside there. Uh, it kind of helped you keep from cutting into the nylon. Like I said, I would prefer it if it was actually like connected all the way up to like here, and then just put this right here and get rid of the handle strap because it's got a bell loop. I just I'm not a fan of snaps in the first place because it makes it slow to draw if you want to draw it you have to pop all these three snaps and then draw it it's it's not practical on speed considering it was designed as a fighting ambushcraft kukri uh it's kind of a flaw um but i was willing to go with one snap because of the way the kukri is shaped and it you don't know, work i was kind of actually wanting a leather sheet normally i'm more of a kydex or an abs plastic kind of guy because it holds up well it's waterproof you don't worry about it molding or rotting or anything like that but uh for some reason i, I kind of felt like i wanted a leather one but no i didn't i didn't i found one with the leather one but it looked it was really short it was like 14 or 15 inches overall um yeah i had more of a uh medieval kind of European look to it and I didn't really want that. Not for my cookery. I don't go wrong, I definitely love European swords. 
I didn't want that for a Kukri. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this. The sharp initial sharpness isn't too bad. I'll have to do some testing and uh, get back to you guys. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, um, one thing I did notice when I was uh, carrying it is it tends to flop around a lot. You know, it's, it, it really does. Um, I, I know it probably would work a little bit better if I carried more than a sword grip like on my opposite side. But I don't have it attached to my leg. So I have this strap that's designed for that I got from one of my... Uh, it came with one of my Gerber knives, my only Gerber, and so I just kind of put this around it. I adjusted it already, and snapped it, and that really helps hold it in place. Um, except I keep having to take this strap off and readjust it because there's no belt loop on the inside of this. If there was a belt loop, I feel like that'd be a lot better. Um, but in any case, what I did is I put this on there. I unsnapped this snap under the one I handle. It stays just fine. All I have to do is unpop it and draw. I feel like if I had belt loop on the back side over here, I feel like that would help it a lot more. But either way, I plan on buying that um, Kydex sheath for it that I found on Amazon. Uh, and when I get that, I haven't bought it yet. When I buy it and I, I receive it, I'll. Uh, review on that let you guys know, what, know about it because it is like I said double the price of the kukri so you don't really want to buy a $6 item for a $30 item without kind of know what you're getting so I'll uh, show you guys that when I get it um yeah right on the first impressions like the way or like some really only complaint so far is the sheath it just doesn't want to stand up it's not Stiff enough. Like this is so flimsy, and I, I prefer mine to be a little more stiff. But stiff. I prefer mine to be a little more stiff. Still talking about the sheath. Uh, <laughs> uh, if it wasn't so flimsy, I feel like it would be an issue. Um, or if I had a belt loop on the back side, uh, I think that would help a lot. Uh, okay, let's get into cutting test. What you guys want to see, isn't it? This is just that box that it came in. It's not, I mean, it's hollow, but I've got the paper and crap that it came with that, you know, protect it in the box on there. So, well, kind of what I expected. It wasn't very tight in there, it was just stuck between two bales. I mean, where it hit, it cut all the way through. So. Yeah, that just smashed it. Um, I think the cardboard is too soft. Not putting enough a spot for it. Just try stabbing it. Oh wow! <laughs> that sunk right in. I mean, yes, it's cardboard and it's metal, and it has a point, so it's gonna do it pretty easily. But still, it kind of surprised me how easy it was. Anyway, enough about that. some oil bar test. The good and bad thing about owning a Cadillac, they burn through oil. It's bad because I have to constantly buy oil. Good because I always have empty bottles to cut up for these reviews. Alright, let's see a nice little... Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't even fucking move. <laughs> That was awesome, it made a nice zinging sound, or sound too, that was, that was awesome. Wow, <laughs> I've never had a knife do that. And I've done a lot more cutting bottles than just in these reviews, right? Here's a Gatorade bottle, a little bit thick plastic. Yeah, I had that at work yesterday, I was going to throw it away, but I was like, yeah, you know what? I know I'm getting my cookie around, I'm just going to... My edge, edge line was a little fucked up on that, but it still did it. I didn't hit it square like I should have. I hit it more like that. But it's definitely did its job. Alright, it's Kukri. It's time to be fighting ambushcraft. 
check out the chop belly. Now, I don't recommend chopping like hard dried wood. This is pretty sure this is oak, um, and it's been sitting out here for years. It's it's dried out because um, it was firewood, so we were letting it dry. It's gonna be really hard wood. Um, if you want to chop something like this, I would suggest more of like an axe. But you know, you gotta be. It's a review. You know, you gotta know what your blade can handle. If I were to get lost in the woods and have only this, would I be able to chop hardwood with it? So, you know. Wow, that actually did a really good job. I wouldn't even hit it that hard. That's not very deep, but it was just biting in really well. No drawing, it's not loose or anything. It doesn't look damaged at all. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have a very thick a very thick spine for batoning. It's gonna, it's not very thick. Um I know a lot of people don't like the fact or the idea of batoning. Because, well, not particularly designed for that. I'd rather do it with a kukri machete like this than a knife. But, like I said, you don't know what you're going to be put into if, in a survival situation. And if I were out in the woods and I got lost, like I was camping and I got lost, um, more than likely I'm not going to get lost at my campsite because I'm going to know where my campsite is. It'd be like when I went out to firewood or something. That's when I get lost. And I'm probably not going to carry an axe on me. I don't carry an axe on me. I'm a... You know, if I'm camping, I take one, but I leave it at the camp, you know. Even if I have, like, my tomahawk, I leave that at the camp. I don't, uh, don't take it and carry around with me. This, I would carry around with me and, you know, or a large knife, so, yeah, you've got to be able to do what you've got to do. Plus, if you're using, like, you know, like I said, if I was chopping something like that up or chop part of a tree, I would definitely do the, um, oh, you guys see my face? <laughs> I would definitely do the uh, axe instead, but yeah, you, this is all I've got. That's all I've got. All right, I've got another test. I'm gonna try cutting and stabbing at some of that siding that I have tons of laying out here because well, it's kind of a different material. Just see what it can kind of do. All right, here we are. Uh, the siding. I recognize it from my uh, undercover push bag review. It's got all the holes in it. So I'm gonna stab it down here where it doesn't have any holes. And yeah, it's a kooky, it's not particularly designed to be a thrusting weapon, but the designer of it, uh, I forget his name, someone with cold steel, uh, designed it as a fighting and bushcraft tool when you want it to also be able to thrust. And I'm going to show you out, like obviously, the, it curves like this, the point is still pretty much right in line with your hand. So that, that's pretty nice. You know. Yeah, that was nothing. I've never had a blade go like through it this side like that. Even my three hundred dollars movie knife. It didn't go through it like that. Granted, I am stabbing with the grain. Okay. I'm gonna stab it sideways so I'm not going with the grain to the siding. See how it bears that way. Yeah, not as deep. Plus I had it right in the spine, but it still went through. You know, if I get a nice solid one, even against the grain, it goes through really well. Now I'm going to try cutting this thing. Not a very clean cut by any means, but hey, it's exciting. What do you expect? Yeah, I'm really loving this kukri. It's got the first cool, cold steel product I've ever owned, uh, and first kukri, and I'm loving it. I don't like to tell you. So I'd say the only issue I have with it is the uh, sheath. Um, cold steel fix that issue. Ish, fix that issue. It'd be a great blade and uh, sheath setup. Um, I understand it's you know. Only $30 blade, so 
uh, they gotta save money somewhere, and I'm glad that they save money in the sheath rather than the blade. But the sheath is just almost just as important as the blade. I mean, I rather have a good blade and a bad sheath and a great sheath and a bad blade because you can use blade without the sheath, you can't really use sheath without the blade. But I still like both a good blade and a good sheath. Like I said, they've got to save money somewhere. Um, I've been paying, willing to pay another ten or fifteen dollars for this if the sheath had been something a little better, whether it be leather, uh, a little just maybe still nylon, better constructed, or uh, a Kydex or ABS plastic or something like that. I'm personally not a fan of uh, nylon sheaths, just because I don't know that I've ever had a nylon sheath that is a great sheath. They've all just been kind of money savers. It's the Royal Cougar Machete, Cold Steel. And I would definitely be buying another cold steel product because this is just phenomenal. I absolutely love this thing. Um, if there's any blades you'd like to see a review of that I have or maybe don't have, I'll try to get them and do a review. Just uh, let me know in the comments section below and uh, thanks for watching.